Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Astropath's latest and greatest. Um, today, we're going to make a video about the Taurus new moon. But before we get into that, um, let me just encourage you to please like us, make comments, um, follow our things. Um, that would be really helpful. And meanwhile, I am Jenny Date of Hidden Path Astrology. And Lori, you are? My name's Lori, and I am of astrolore.org. Nice. Yeah. The two of us together make Astropath. Um, so that's, I think I've included, is there anything else you want to add to that little intro? Yeah, well, I don't know. You can find us both on Facebook, Instagram, all the places you can, mm -hmm. um, follow Astrolore on Patreon. And of course here, if you're watching us on YouTube, this is where we are together. Everything nice. else is our own separate stuff. Yeah, that's a, a very good point. <laughs> um, so today we're talking about the Taurus new moon. Um, it's an interesting one because it's coming at the very end of Taurus season, um, which is what we're going to be looking at for the next few months with each season. Um, but before we get into that, let's just discuss really quickly um, what we're talking about. Um, a new moon is kind of like the time when you plant that seed in the soil and it racks open and it starts to grow and a week later you have the first quarter moon and that's when you can look up in the sky and see that half split of dark and light on the moon it's one of my favorite phases mm. um and then a week later you end up with the full moon and that's kind of like the flower if you're using the plant cycle analogy so you see this like bloom and everything's illuminated which is a lovely also very lovely phase um and then another week later we go to the last quarter moon where the whole cycle starts to shut down and you have that um, split face moon again. Um, but now we're ending things and bringing things to a close. And then it goes into the dark moon phase and it starts all over again. So at the new moon, we are looking at planting seeds. So what are we planting I, seed for? <laughs> well, before we go, I just want to mention, for some reason, as you were talking about it, and you said something about really liking that first quarter phase. And I think it's, it's so interesting. Were you born at a first quarter phase? I was. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that um, if we know the phase that we were born at, it's always our favorite phase. It <laughs> always is. You know, if you and if you don't know what phase you were born at, I would encourage you to find out because that's a really significant thing on a personal level. And I want to um, remind you, if you haven't seen it, that we did a series of videos and we'll put a link in. Um, below in the show notes about that because we did a video of people born at each of the phases of the moon mm -hmm. and and it's it's pretty interesting and it's one of those you know that old series of videos we did quite a while ago people still watch that those a lot and that's it's pretty cool so find out what phase you're born at go listen to that video about that and um yeah yeah that's it's great yeah, it's been fun seeing comments come in from those like over time. So yeah, that's a really great point. Yeah. Um, yeah, so well, uh, what else do we need to talk about? I guess we need to give you some dates, don't we? Yes. <laughs> um, this new moon is happening on May 19th. This is 11.53 a.m. That's Eastern time. So please adjust for your time zone. And as mentioned, we're at the very end of Taurus. We're at 28 degrees of Taurus. Mm -hmm. So very interesting to think about closing down Taurus season with a new moon. Um, what do you make of that, Lori? Well, I think it's pretty interesting. I think there's been a lot going on in Taurus. Um, and, and it sort of feels like we've been tilling the soil over these last weeks. Mm -hmm. We've been tilling that soil in that area where we have Taurus in our own individual charts. And now we're ready. The soil is ready and we're going to plant that seed. One of the things I like about this is, you know, coming um, after the eclipses, I always like the first new moon after eclipse season because it just feels so much, I don't know, simpler, simpler. Yeah, it um, is. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, in Taurus, we're very simple. I mean, on, on a very fundamental level, this new moon is, I think is just representing like a, planting a seed for stabilization because there's a lot of change in the air. We have a very exciting aspect as soon as the sun and moon go into Gemini that we're going to um, talk about in our video today. Um, but this is a really important time to figure out where is ground? What does it mean to be grounded? What are the activities I can do that help me get grounded? Like, what does that mean for me? And how do I do that? Those are the, some of the things you really want to have at the forefront of your mind um, because there's a lot going on and you want to have 
a sense of stability somewhere in your life, a place where you're like, yep, my two feet are on the ground and I'm still here. So, you know, it's that simple. So simple, simple. <laughs> simple. simple. I mean, that's the thing with Taurus. Taurus wants simplicity, stable simplicity. That's really what Taurus is always seeking to find that point of groundedness where they can rest. You know, there's just so much, yeah, there's so much activity always, but wherever Taurus is in, in your chart um, is a place where you really just want to be able to rest and, um, and, uh, you know, sort of, there's that whole idea with Taurus of getting things the way they should be and then keeping them there. Whatever should be means to you that area of your life, you want it to be a particular way and then hold that steady. So this is, yeah, it's a time of planting a seed for stability. So what else is Taurus about? Well, I was just going to say like everything's on a spectrum, you know, so like Taurus taken too far, uh, it has earned its reputation for being very stubborn, for digging its heels in um, and really holding fast to things, even when there's change all over the place and that change is good for you. So that's the taken too far. Taurus doesn't want any change at all. And that is not a healthy place to be. Um, but interestingly, having the planet Uranus, the planet of change in Taurus these last few years, there's been a lot of themes around, you know, changing things like earthquakes underneath our feet, like what's changing and how do we deal with that change? And how do we continue to find a sense of stability, even though things are changing? So there's some really dynamic questions being um, posed by Taurus right now. So uh, what what else do you think of? Well, I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, Taurus often, some of the things that are attributed to Taurus are like money, resources. Um, and you you think about Uranus in there and all the change around money and and Bitcoin and all that. I mean, that's all been with uh, with Uranus and Taurus. And then women also. Uh, women is a, a thing of Taurus. So yeah, Taurus, Taurus is such an interesting sign. It is a fixed sign. It's an earth sign. Um, and like you said, you know, going too far, it gets to stubbornness, it gets to laziness is another thing that is kind of attributed to, to a, an undeveloped or, yeah, yeah, a Taurus that's not quite where it needs to be. <laughs> yeah, like the over accumulation of things like, I mean, fabulous amounts of wealth, for example, just the total over accumulation. Right. Um, and also food. Taurus has to do with food. And I think some of the Uranus and Taurus stuff has been about food and where we get our food. And uh, we're fairly disconnected in a lot of cases from wherever on earth we get our food. And really it is from earth. <laughs> so there is some uh, some themes around that as well. Um, and on a personal level, hopefully you have all used this past few weeks with the Mercury retrograde in Taurus. Um, and after the last eclipse, this really was an opportunity to go within um, and just kind of work with those ideas of what does it mean to be steady internally? Um, how can you, again, be more grounded? So hopefully you've used that time and then now you're ready to kind of plant a seed so that you can really maintain that stability through the upcoming change. So Yes. And another thing I want to mention is today, the day we're actually making this video, which we're kind of late making it, but um, today, Jupiter is moving into Taurus and mm -hmm. Jupiter spends approximately a year in each sign. And I feel like Jupiter moving into Taurus is is really, um, I like the fact that Jupiter is moving into Taurus with, with Uranus in there creating so much turmoil. Jupiter moves in and it kind of settles it um, to some extent. Jupiter's job basically is just to make things bigger and i i wish we had made a whole video about jupiter but we didn't so <laughs> well i think um in a minute here we'll open up that chart but just want to add one more thing which is that the full moon that goes with this new moon is a full moon in sagittarius on june 3rd that's the quick okay. cycle yeah. um and then if you if you like the bigger six month cycles october 28th we will have a full moon in taurus that one will be an eclipse Mm -hmm. um, but that's just that bigger picture thinking. So um, just note those two dates. Um, and 
I would love to open up that chart. Are you ready to show? It's just such a huge amount of Taurus. <laughs> yes, it's it's kind of cool to look at it. Okay, yeah. there it is. There's the chart. Look at all of that Taurus. It's pretty dramatic <laughs> just to see it laid out like that, isn't it? Yes, I, that's why I was like, yeah, let's show this chart because it just really shows you. I mean, you've got the sun and the moon in there. You've got Uranus, the little MCs, the midheaven, Mercury, the north node is in Taurus and Jupiter there at zero Taurus. So, wow, you know, just what a message around, you know, on a personal level, getting grounded. Um, I just keep thinking you've got to, I don't know, it's like a practice of planting your feet on the ground. So whether that means you go outside and you're going for a walk, or if you're in a conversation and maybe it's upsetting, you can simply remind yourself, my feet are on the ground and you can actually feel the ground beneath you. And that is a very simple, profoundly useful technique. So that's what we're talking about with <laughs> millions of things in Taurus. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of Taurus. I, I always <laughs> see these charts of, you know, moments in time and think, oh, somebody's being born at this moment, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, wow. this is going to be somebody's birth chart. It's yeah. pretty interesting to think about. And, you know, mm -hmm. when, when we look at this chart and the, there's the sun and the moon at 28 degrees Taurus, we can't help but notice some of the aspects that are made to that. What's the first thing that jumps out at you, Jenny? Well, I, I just see the Pluto and the Mars opposite each other. Nice. I mean, you can't really help but boom, those are so strongly. Um, yeah. And, yeah. you know, basically Mars has to move into Leo, which it does within a day or two here um, yeah. after the new moon before it absolutely exactly makes that opposition. But here it's, it's uh, gearing up for it. Let's put it that way. It's gearing up for it. And um, that Mars also at, at the moment of the, um, of the new moon, there's a tr uh, sextile aspect from Mars to the uh, the new moon. What do you make of that? Well, that just adds a little more oh. spice to the mix. I mean, that just adds a little more. I mean, Mars is in Cancer, but Mars is a very active planet. Um, Mars is often sort of a, a trigger, you know, like something that helps get something going. So even though we're in the, the yin signs, it's almost in Leo. So there's something very active here. There's a an yeah. action that you want to take. Um, and I think the, the question is that that action is only there if you reach for it, but also you want to know, I, I feel like you want to be very clear about your motives for an action. And I'm saying that because Mars is right opposite of Pluto, you know, be very easy to be, you know, just jump to something and not really understand why you're doing it because Pluto refers to hidden things. So I think that there's, you want to be clear about why you're taking an action um, with these two signs. That's what comes to my mind. Well, I like that. I, I think that's a really important thing. I also just want to note that um, the moon and Mars are in mutual reception or yeah, Mars is ruling the moon in, in cancer. That's yeah. what I would say. So, you know, there's a kind of a special relationship there along with the sextile. It really is an opportunity to use the power that's available there to dig into that dirt to plant that seed, I guess. That's, yeah. That's what comes to mind. It's interesting they're both in yin signs because you were mentioning earlier about the, you know, the the idea that these are feminine signs or the yin sign. And there's something about um, I don't know, a power that is uh subtle that isn't taken to be power, but actually it is, you know, there's something hidden or not obvious about it, but it's extremely potent, you know? So there's something about strength in the feminine, um, strength in feminine power or something like that, that is coming to the forefront with that, but only if you reach to take it, you know? Right. And that's sextile. the thing about a sextile. Sextile aspects are opportunities. They're not gifts. They're opportunities. We have to take action to, you know, to uh, enliven them. And, you know, it is interesting too, to look at this chart, the only speaking of the whole yin yang, feminine, masculine planets, Pluto's the only planet at this moment in time that is in a masculine sign. Hmm. That's interesting. It no, is. Isn't it interesting too, how Mars is making that exact sextile right before it goes into Leo, the masculine sign. Right. So 
I feel like there's some sort of statement being made here about the um, the internal power, um, this the more silent, you know, hidden power that you need to work with. So I'm thinking about, I don't know, like Mars moving into Leo, it can be fun, but it also can be really selfish. So there's something about like, no, not being selfish, doing something that includes others, that something that is bearing the needs of other people in mind. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other aspects that kind of support that in this chart. Um, Saturn to Venus comes, you know, is, is supporting that as well. So it's kind of like, I don't know, like charging up the battery and making sure that you're taking care of physical needs, that you're, you know, thinking about other people before you, this like explosive thing happens, you know, this it's something, uh, gosh, you're just drawing in all kinds of little angles here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, you said that about Saturn and Venus being in a trine aspect and then it just, you know, uh, Saturn is sextiling Mercury, Mercury is sextiling Venus. So there is a little statement here about speaking up on behalf of the stabilization of, I don't know, women, Venus. Yeah. And you look in the news, I mean, you, you know, people who are watching this video, there's so many things going on in the news. I mean, I definitely think the, just some of the stuff about transgender issues that are coming up is, is reflective of some of what this chart is saying. It's very interesting. So yeah. be curious, uh, yeah. be curious about what's going on around you. See what, where you see this pattern showing up in your own life um, and in the you know, bigger picture. Yeah. And I, I love that you are just saying that, you know, the, the whole issue of curiosity yeah. is such an important thing to keep in mind. You know, it's yeah. so easy for us to get stuck in our opinions and our ideas of how things should be. And, you know, just to be curious about why other people think differently or, you know, what, what is really going yeah. on? We don't have the answers um, to so much of what we might think we do. So curiosity is such an important thing. And with the sun getting ready to move into Gemini, which is the sign of curiosity, you want to really, really keep that in mind. So it's interesting that this sextile between the new moon and Mars once Mars moves into Cancer and the Sun and Moon are moving into Gemini, that sextile kind of continues a yeah. bit as well. Yeah, yeah Mars like, moving into Leo, that's going to be a really interesting, uh, that's, yeah. that will change the balance of energy. And I mean, I also think too, with part of what Pluto is saying is, you know, you got to look a bit deeper, you know, use your curiosity to look deeper. Um, and with Saturn and Pisces, it's, Imagine being in someone else's shoes. See if you can picture, literally picture in your mind what it might be like to be in somebody totally different shoes um, and what their opinion might be. And I mean, it's <laughs> that kind of curiosity we're looking at. Like, yeah, it's a deeper level. It's not shallow. It's with Pluto there. It is just go penetrate beneath the surface. Yeah, it's interesting to think about. And then, you know, before we get into the one-on-one -on -one impacts, I just want to, it's one of the things that really was standing out for me as I was looking at this is once this is finished, I want to actually take that and that and that away. Um, once the sun and moon enter into Gemini, what's going to happen is immediately Pluto is trining that. And I really want wanted us to highlight that because you know, there's so many hard things we could highlight and stay focused on, but this is such a statement of empowerment that I don't want us to miss out on really doing what we can to take advantage of a, a really lovely statement of empowerment that we can all kind of tap into for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, you know, about your, your personal life. Like, where do you want to expand and become more empowered? Where can you use the power of your imagination, which is a very, an air thing, um, which Gemini and Aquarius, there are air things, um, to have a greater understanding, have it to develop a greater sense of empathy. I mean, that's kind of what we're, I mean, there's a number of ways you could summarize this, but I love that you brought that in and um, we're going to include that in the individual thing. So, yes. That's so great. are we ready to move right on to that? I think let's do it. Okay, let's just do it. 
Let's move on and we're going to take a look first at those of you who have Aries rising and here the sun and moon, the new moon is happening in the second house in Taurus. So for those of you with Aries rising, you have Taurus in your second house. You really, really want a stable, you know, stability is really important to you when it comes to your finances, to your own self-worth, self-esteem. That's an area that, that's really important to have stabilized for you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, over these past weeks uh, with the sun moving through Taurus, you've been through a lot. You know, there's been a lot going on in that area of money, finances, self-worth. And, you know, to think of it the way we talked about it in the first part of the video, just that this has been a time of kind of tilling that soil, getting ready to plant this seed for further stabilization in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the minute that things go into Gemini, when the sun goes into Gemini just a couple of days later and the moon is there um, just a hot minute before that, um, it enters into a trine with Pluto. So this is a tremendous amount of energy um, and it's air. So it's kind of, you can think about a big gust of wind coming along. So that's why you want to be so nice and grounded. You want to be really grounded in your self-worth issues, whatever your concerns were about money, so that when this comes along, you are ready to take advantage of Gemini season. And how is it going to impact you? It has to do with your communication. It has to do with your connection with your community um, and the way that you kind of socialize and engage in those connections. Um, there's a lot of potential for your community to really empower you in a new and interesting way. And it certainly seems to have to do with your voice. Um, that is certainly could be a thing. So there's, you know, think about those two areas of your life and think about what transformation you would like to see in your life and how you show up in that community. And what is the seed that you need to plant at this new moon that will really give you the self-confidence and the stability to use your voice when that empowerment is there available to you. Yeah, I think that's great. That's lovely. That's lovely. So plant a seed, something about your self-worth, something, you know, I, I get all kinds of little thoughts and pictures in my mind, <laughs> get a new haircut, yeah. you know, anything, just a symbolic planting of a seed for your self-worth, okay? So now we're gonna move on to those of you with, oh, I've gotta make this go away first <laughs> before I can move it. So for those of you with Taurus rising, mm -hmm. really personal. This is yeah. very personal. Yeah, this new moon is landing right in your first house. Um, again, this is probably the most powerful house in the whole scheme of things here. Um, so this is a really good opportunity for Taurus rising to really, um, I don't know, get clear about part of your purpose is to provide grounding for other people is to be grounded in yourself. And now it's like, okay, hey, here's this time to plant a seed to really maintain that stability of self. Um, that's not to say be inflexible, though. Um, but that's what you want to focus on. The last few weeks, Mercury has retrograded through here. So you've really had a, some time to think about what soil do you need to upturn? Where do you need to mix things up? So that now that that soil is good and plowed and it's ready to receive the seed that you want to plant. Um, and that seed is going to really help support you over the next few weeks. Right. Yeah. So as soon as you plant that seed, then the sun and the moon will be moving into Gemini and you'll be encountering that beautiful trine aspect to Pluto that is going to really empower your self-worth. Some, some aspect of your of the outer world, your career, your reputation, something in that area is really going to um, be empowering your self-worth. And the seed that you plant to ground yourself to ground your personality will enable you to really receive that empowerment. Yeah. I mean, this is the beginning of a major transformative time to do with your profession. You know, something about, we talk about uh, the 10th house being a profession or how you show up in public or your social reputation. 
Um, those are all things that we're talking about. And there's something about the way that does a change in your workplace or potential change that can really impact your financial situation. It can impact your, your and how you feel about yourself. I mean, that's that self-worth thing. So really, if you're, you know, plant that seed to get grounded, it's going to enable you to weather big change and also embrace your own transformation uh, in this way. Yeah. I mean, Pluto is, you're just getting kind of a glimpse of it. This empowerment right now is kind of a glimpse of the the coming years that Pluto will be in that 10th house. So you're getting a glimmer of the empowerment that you can receive through how you show up in the outer world. That, that's really lovely. So plant your seed, plant a metaphorical seed to stabilize your personality, which will enable you to receive this uh, this incredible gift of Pluto coming up there. All right. Okay, so we're going to move on to those of you with Gemini rising. This puts that new moon right in your 12th house. Oh, isn't that interesting? People with Gemini rising, you know, Gemini rising people are kind of tend to be pretty social on the surface and can have easy conversations and all that. That's what we kind of think of with that. But boy, the unconscious, the deep hidden unconscious is a place of rock hard stability, right? Um, but there's been a lot going on there over these past weeks with Mercury retrograde and all the other things that are going on in Taurus right now. So you've been kind of tilling the soil of your unconscious, preparing for this new seed that you need to plant here at the new moon. Hmm. What a powerful time. I mean, it's so important to think of the idea of like being grounded in this really um, this, in this area of life that is like sort of hard to describe. I mean, it, as you were saying, the subconscious, the subconscious patterns, but I think in a certain way, it's kind of like really being okay with being alone. I mean, there's something in here about just being totally content, being silent, in alone space and that carrying that forwards into the change that's going to happen as soon as the sun and moon go into Gemini and gets into a trine with Pluto, um, this is going to provide you with a profound source of anchoring. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very helpful because you're about to experience sort of a whirlwind. I always think of Gemini as being this like burst of wind, you know, for Gemini season. There's this whirlwind kind of happening in the way that you show up in the world. Um, and it's also being empowered by Pluto there in the ninth house of your worldview, um, which is a source of wisdom. So, you know, the more you're able to kind of be okay with that alone space, the more you are just, you know, ready to embrace this pretty dramatic, you know, shift in the way that you show up in the world. Yeah, it's, it's. Yeah. I, I like thinking about that Taurus in the 12th house as, like you said, you're really, it's important. Time alone is important. Time in nature is so important. I think for people with Gemini rising, time in nature, that's kind of the, the spiritual place. Nature is a, a real spiritual place for people with Gemini rising. And um, and yeah, the, that Pluto, there's some big change in the world view. And that could come through education. It could come through travel, some encounter with other cultural understandings that can really empower your personality as the sun and moon, as you plant that seed for internal spiritual or on that level of unconscious you're planting a seed to ground yourself there and that will stabilize you and enable you to really take advantage of this powerful shift that's available to you in your personality mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. there's some way i think you know the first house and ninth house are both concerned with experiences and i just for some reason what came to my mind was the idea of um that you're, because you've done this 12th house work, that you have the possibility to really be a guide to others at this time. Um, and that might show up for you in a, in a few different ways, um, but in, in through that ninth and that first house. So anyway, that's just popped in my mind. Uh, it was an interesting I thought. like that. I, I yeah. like that thought. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so let's move on 
get rid of this and we will move on to those of you with cancer rising okay so for this past period of time while the sun's been moving through taurus we've had uh, mercury retrograde there so in your 11th house in your community the uh the community that supports you to what you desire in your life that area where you receive from others, there's been a lot going on in that area. And you can think of it as you've been tilling that soil. Mm -hmm. um, and now at the end of Taurus season, you're planting a seed, a seed that will stabilize you as these planets shift and um, Gemini season begins. Mm. Yeah, this is really interesting. Um to me, what this is saying is that seed of being grounded is actually um, a seed of being open, open to things, of receptivity, so that you get grounded so that you can receive what the community is offering you. Because if you can't receive, it, it you can't receive. It's not you're not going to feel supported. So there's something here about all those the work and the slowing down and the grounding you've done in the last few weeks. Now is that moment to really plant the seed so that you can be receptive to this profound opportunity um, that is coming your way that is really going to change the way that you view the world from behind the scenes. Um, the, these um, There's a trine of Pluto to the sun and moon when it goes into Gemini. So there's something really, I mean, the eighth and the twelfth house, I mean, these are like the psychic instinctive intuitive houses here that we're talking about so this is a kind of a hidden but very profound change in the way that you manage how you walk in the world I mean, yeah and that change that empowerment pluto just brings such a incredible gift of empowerment so for you it's it's really coming from how you have learned or how you are learning, how you're transforming your ways of navigating other pe navigating difficult situations with other people. And the empowerment is to your unconscious, your spiritual life, your inner, you know, really that quiet inner space of the 12th house. Yeah. It's interesting having Pluto in the eighth house, isn't it? I mean, to me, it kind of speaks of, um, Oh, I don't know. Almost like there's sort of an occult feeling to it where with Pluto there, it's sort of like, hey, your boundaries have been one way, but now you need to let in these other energies. You need to let in these other layers and they aren't the ones that are maybe so obvious uh, in our society, but something about, um, about being, this whole chart speaks to me about being open to something new, be, being receptive with that Taurus uh, new moon, just you know, being willing to be more receptive because that's a yin sign. And even though it's earth, it is about being able to receive. Um, there's something about that that is just fascinating to me on this chart. So, yeah, you know, there's something else that just kind of came to my mind with, you know, Gemini being in, you know, if you've got cancer rising, Gemini being in your 12th house, it's like these encounters, these deep encounters with others um, learning new ways to set boundaries, to engage with others is, is enabling you to find ways to articulate what's been hidden and inaccessible. Ooh, yeah. There's I something in that, but first, before you get there, you've got to plant that seed to stabilize the the community that supports you you need that support in order to engage that voice that hidden internal voice hmm. yeah it's really interesting to think about that yeah that's great okay moving okay. right along now we are going to go to those of you with leo rising leo <laughs> oh leo <laughs> So Leo, your tax before it has to do with your profession, your uh, social reputation, how you show up in public. Um, that new moon in Taurus is coming at the very end of your 10th house. Um, so there's something that's been, you know, you've been revisiting these past few weeks uh, with Mercury retrograde in Taurus. 
in this area of your life. And now you've kind of, you know, maybe made some adjustments or revisited a few things. And, and now you're ready to just solidify your commitment to mm-hmm. whatever it is you're working on. So you're planting a seed to maintain that commitment, to maintain stability um, on something you're working on in your profession. And in order to <laughs> get ready for the upcoming Gemini season, because as soon as the sun and moon move into Gemini, they're going to immediately hit a very powerful trine with Pluto in Aquarius. Um, So the preparation you do around grounding, around the solidity of your your career, it's allowing you to kind of move into this next phase, which has to do with your community. So it's fine and dandy to have a, a profession, but that profession fits in a larger community. So that's part of what we're seeing here. Um, meantime, there's this empowerment that has to do with how you deal with one-on-one relationships. It could be a marriage or a partnership that you're in, even a business partnership, but it could also be just those one-on-one encounters that provide a lot of, um, I don't know, impetus for things to happen. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're looking at, planting a seed in the career and then having this opportunity for transformation in this much more kind of social area of your life. Yeah, I th- I think of you know as I'm looking at this, I just imagine some interaction with an individual, whether it be a long term partner or just an interaction with an equal person that opens up this floodgate of empowerment to community. You know, maybe meeting someone who pulls you into some community that ends up really being a powerful game changer for you. But before you get there, before you can take advantage of that, you've got to plant the seed to stabilize the career space. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. The idea is, you know, if you, you don't want to get toppled over by this new energy. So you want to have that security where you know where you're standing. And then that allows you to really expand in a way that you don't lose sight of your own center. You know, you don't just get smacked over and bowled over, but that you're able to maintain, like what you said there, Lori, about having, there's an uh, an equality piece here, a person that's on your level that brings you into a community. So in order to maintain that um, sense of feeling even keeled, you want to have that grounding. So. Yeah, so, you know, and Pluto has only been in Aquarius for a very short period of time, and it's only going to be in there for a short period of time now. Um, what was it? March 23rd till June 11th is the period. Yeah. And then it goes back into Capricorn for a while. You know, it's doing its little dance there. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be there for a long time. So you want to really pay attention to anyone in your life, any relationship that has that is suddenly of significance if some significant relationship is introducing you to a community of sorts you're going to want to pay serious attention yeah what a great opportunity yeah yeah Yeah, a huge opportunity available there okay are we ready to move on yeah okay so now we're going to move on to those of you with virgo rising what's going on here jenny Oh my, let's see. Well, Virgo rising, um, you've got Taurus up there in your worldview. So this is um, how something about the way that you think about the world um, is very much tied into how grounded you feel. You know, that's what you kind of want to work with. Um, I think that the good part of this is there's a lot of stability. um, open. Like as you think critically of things around you, you're also maintaining stability. So there's a relationship between your ability to have an open mind and your ability to stay grounded. So that's what you want to plant a seed for. I mean, these past few weeks, there's been some change, maybe something reemerged that you weren't expecting. Um, It's kind of like a tilling of the soil that's been happening while Mercury's being retrograde and all those things in this ninth house. So now you are ready to plant that seed. And it's really a seed to maintain your own wisdom, you know, and to maintain stability as these new changes start to happen. Because. (laughs) Right. Because that sun and moon are going to be moving right into Gemini, which is your 10th house. And as soon as they go in there, Pluto is trining those two planets. So there's some way in which stabilizing your worldview, stabilizing that area is going to really assist you in 
being able to take advantage of the empowerment that is coming your way, the empowerment from your day-to-day -day routines and how that is supporting your career. Mm -hmm. So huh, mm -hmm. if you have had a long-term routine of some sort that you can think of that may be ultimately for the support of your career. I mean, these two signs, two houses are totally linked. Your day-to-day -day routines, yeah. your career, they're always linked. But this is, is a time when your career is really going to be empowered by those routines. Yeah, that's super cool. I mean, it's it, it because really when you think about it, your great works in you know somebody's career is based off of what did they do on a daily basis? You right. know, what did they create, you know, every single day that added to the large body of their work? You know, I was thinking about someone like Carl Jung, you know, every day, the way that he worked um, to create this body for his uh, his career. So they really work really well together. Um, and also that, you know, your profession can shine a light on some ways that um, you need to alter your routine so that you can manage for the long term. You know, you don't want to drive yourself into the ground by being obsessive, you know, you want to find that nice balance of the the right mix of things. Um, and that's what that Taurus seed is helping you with, the wisdom to know the difference, right? Right. And yeah, yeah, you can't, that energy is, because it's so intellectual, it's such heady energy, that having this opportunity to ground it right before it really comes into play is it's really beautiful. Yeah, very helpful. It's I love that the new moon's coming at the end of the season. It's actually really cool. Yeah, so, I like it too. Yeah. I think it's really good. It's like this process has been going on for some weeks, especially with that you know, Mercury retrograde at the same time. You've been doing a lot of work there. And yeah. now you're ready to set the determination. Like, yeah. this is it. I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. I figured out something that's going to help me stabilize this worldview in order to take advantage of the empowerment of my career. That's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. I can certainly lovely. see how that fits for me personally, but that's another story. <laughs> okay. Um, going on to Libra rising, this puts, oh, you've got Taurus in your eighth house. Mm -hmm. Eighth house is the area of other people's deep stuff and how we navigate it. That's how I think of it at any rate. And, you know, Taurus, we've been in Taurus season. We've had the Mercury retrograde. You've been kind of working in this area, figuring out you've probably been doing a lot of work on, you know, your boundaries, setting boundaries, being clear around certain things um, or learning to be clear. And now you've done that work. It's time to plant the seed to really stabilize that area, stabilize your ability to navigate other people's stuff. You've yeah. got the opportunity to do that before these planets move into the next house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a, um, it's such an important skill, you know, to be able to maintain your own ground while other people are, you know, coming at you, you know, as one way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. But once those things move into Gemini, because both moon and sun are going to very quickly here move into Gemini, and both of them are immediately going to try and Pluto. Now, Pluto is all about transformation. It's about empowerment. It's about, in a lot of ways, it's about hidden power. You know, and in your fifth house, it's bringing up something to do with your creativity or the way that you are able to unconditionally give love. There's some uh, profound empowerment coming from there. I always think about like pouring yourself into a creative process, mm. uh, that sort of thing. And that is really informing um, your ability to shape your own worldview. You know, what experiences open your mind, uh, which is what the ninth house represents. I think it's those, you know, foreign experiences with foreigners or experiences with foreign lands or higher education that really start to expand your mind. Um, and with Gemini there, Gosh, your, your mind is, I mean, the sky's the limit, right? With Gemini there, it's just such a, with that air. I mean, there's so much that you can imagine and work with here. So yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing that comes to my mind is, yeah, the ninth house, it's all of these ways, all of these 
places in our lives where we expand our understanding of the greater world, education and travel and religion, not spirituality, but religion and even politics is there. So, you know, I was thinking, oh, well, ground your ability. I, I'm going to come up with one of my silly things here. Ground your ability to navigate other people's stuff. And then you're really empowered by your ability to love. You're empowered to expand your understanding of the world. And you know, I, I'm just thinking, I, I want politicians to all have Libra rising right now. That, that's what I want. <laughs> yeah, I. So, there's just something about the, the the Gemini and Gemini season, like the duality of it, the, the ability to be on this side or that side and kind of see both sides. I mean, this whole thing. And I mean, Libra is classically known for that. And yes, you're Li Libra rising, that's gonna be a thing, you know? So I, I think this is, it might've been a tough time with Taurus season in your eighth house with the going back and forth. And then now it's sort of going, okay, let's solidify, you know, what I've learned and use it as a touchstone so that I can expand my mind in a whole new way. And um, accept the power that's coming from my own creativity. Yeah. It's wonderful. Okay. Yeah. And th that fifth house, I just want to add, you know, the fifth house can also be children. It can be, you know, anything that we give of ourselves to. And I was just thinking, you know, with some people, this really could suggest a powerful interaction with a child or a new love interest mm -hmm. that allows us to open our minds in a new way or travel or something along those lines as well. Yeah, that's really nice. Interesting. Okay, so let's move on to those of you who have Scorpio rising. No, no. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Scorpio rising, there's been a quite the focus on your partnerships. So think to yourself, what's been going on in my partnerships? And again, this this could be your marriage, you know, your partner in life, your business partner, or also just any one-on-one -on -one encounter. Um, that's sort of an equal one-on-one -on -one encounter. So think about that. Um, and then think about, you know, the seed that you want to plant to kind of stabilize that, to stay stable through these changes that are coming up. So we're talking about inner stability here. Um, like how can you feel grounded? What are the activities that make you feel grounded? And then what about your partnerships uh, ties into that? So something about a seed planted for stability in your partnerships. Mm -hmm. um, so that when the sun and the moon move into Gemini coming up really soon here, and they immediately try and Pluto, you are ready for the change that this represents or the opportunity for empowerment or transformation or um, something that's maybe hidden. Um, that's what that's what you want to have the seed planted for. Nice and grounded to work with that. Yeah. And you can see, you know, that moving from the seventh to the eighth house, it's such a you plant the seed for stability in a partnership relationship. And that allows you to really take advantage of and the 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 empowerment that's coming in your ability to navigate difficult things yeah too, in that eighth house so there's yeah that that's an interesting thing some power from the core from the root from a family member from the home you know, there could be all kinds of things. It could be around selling a home and then you've got money that's shared resources. I, I mean, there's all kinds of ways that that these things can show up. But the point is, in order to take advantage of the empowerment that is available, you have to first stabilize, set that, set that seed in the ground and give it good water, give it good love so that it will hold that stable place while you go on into this empowerment. Yeah. I really like that. I mean, there's been like a, as we were saying, this sort of like a tilling of the soil that's been happening in the seventh house. It's a really, it's a, it's really, really great timing to now plant the seed. Um, so anyway. Yeah. People with Scorpio rising, it's like there's so, so much intensity within the personality. And yet when it comes to partnership, there's such a desire for simplicity and stability and beauty and love and the the intensity is right here. <laughs> it's an yeah. interesting, interesting. Those polarities are always so much fun to really, really look at and think about. Yeah, 
that really, really helpful information. So, yeah. Okay. So let's move on to those of you with Sagittarius rising. So this puts that Taurus in your sixth house. Is sixth house being simply the area of our lives that's involved with our day-to-day -day routines that support our health. Um, yeah, routines, physical routines, dietary routines, all of those things. It's uh, it, This is an area where, because you've got Taurus there, you really want stable, simple, beautiful practices on a daily basis. And over these last few weeks, these la this last month or so, with Mercury being retrograde, the sun going through there, and all that's been going on in that area, you know, you, you've really rethought, probably changed up some of your routine practices. And you can think of that as over this period of time, you've been kind of tilling the soil to prepare it for this seed that you're planting. Now, why do you want to plant that seed? Because you want to be ready. You want to have stable, good routines within, you know, a, as a place of, you know, just something you can trust and hold on to. You've got that stability. And that will really help you as right after the new moon, the sun and the moon are going to be going into your seventh house and being trined by Pluto, trining Pluto. So there's really an empowerment from your, your voice, how you use your voice is going to really be able to empower your relationships, your partnerships. Mm. But you've got yeah. to have that grounding in your, in your routines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was thinking as you're talking about that, I mean, that, that Pluto also could represent um, a sibling or a sibling like friend who is also the source of some impetus that changes the way you're doing partnerships. It could be something that you learn um, and it kind of gets folded into that those one on one partnerships. So just think about what those topics are. I mean, other third house topics are neighbors, um, just how you walk around your neighborhood, how you move around. Um, and interestingly, with that, the uh, new moon and Taurus being in the sixth house, I think about sort of movement, like how do you move in the world? Um, how do you move your body? Uh, these are some topics that might uh, kind of play into these things that we're talking about. So it's, a, it's interesting to think about that. And interesting, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if you are if you happen to be single and looking for a partner, well, pay attention to somebody your, your siblings or your neighbor introduces you to. <laughs> you know, you can... Think of it in those terms as well, or just, you know, if, if your neighbors or siblings, or you meet somebody in the grocery store, they could be an important friend over time. You know, you that think about it that way as well. Yeah. There's some learning here about intimacy too, I think with air signs and the, in the partnership house, it's like, you know, wanting to, that could be very intellectual and aloof. So there's something about that, like transforming that and bringing a new layer into that um, could be something that was helpful. So interesting. Yeah. Okay. So let's um, move on to those of you with Capricorn rising. Oh yeah. So with Capricorn rising, this new moon in Taurus is falling in your fifth house. Um, so this is a suggestion that during Taurus season with Mercury retrograde and all those things that you've been tilling the soil in some way that you give of yourself. Um, this might be creativity, like creative pursuits, or it could have something to do with children. Um, those are the topics of the fifth house. But at any rate, what you really want to do here is plant a seed for stability um, in how you give of yourself. So this, there's something really lovely and generous in that, um, in that planting of that seed, but you want to be really good in that area because there's some big changes afoot. Um, when the sun and the moon move into Gemini, which is happening in short order, um, just a couple days after this, um, they are immediately going to have a trine of Pluto. And this is a huge gift of empowerment from Pluto. So you want to be nice and, you know, really good with yourself about how you give love so that when things move into that six house of routines, you're able to feel really stable. Um, I mean, I'd be kind of thinking of this as if you've been involved in some creative process, you want to carry that seed of creativity forwards into your sixth house so that your routines, you know, maintain their sort of fun and social vibe. I mean, that's what you want to keep so that you keep doing them for your health. So 
I like that because with Gemini there in the sixth house, yeah, your routines, having your routines um, be fun and social will help you keep with them for sure. Yeah. So yeah, the um, your something in your self-worth profile is really empowering your ability to create strong routines that will really support your, your health mm -hmm. going forward. Yeah. And I mean, again, both of these houses pertain to livelihood and work. So there's something to think about there too, that there's some change in your financial situation or how you feel about yourself, your self-esteem. Um, there's a big transformation going on there. And it very much ties into your livelihood, your routines, the day-to-day -day things, your work habits, um, the lunch that you pack, you know, all of those things all work together uh, to help support whatever it is that you do for work. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, plant that seed in the fifth house. Do something to set the stage for stability around your creativity. I think yeah. that's great. I Go plant a garden. I, I'm just thinking yeah. about this. Taurus new moon. It's like time yeah. to plant the gardens, isn't it? Plant and plant. <laughs> yeah, right. absolutely. Okay, so now we're going to move on to those of you with Aquarius rising. And this puts the new moon and Taurus in your fourth house of home and family, the root core of your life, really. So those of you with Aquarius rising, isn't it interesting? People with Aquarius rising are so unique on the surface. They look, um, the, the personality is expressed with such uniqueness. And yet the, um, the family, the home is where real stability is required for these people. They really require that stable, grounded home and family. And over these past weeks with Mercury retrograde and the sun moving through there, you know, you, you there's been a lot of change in that area of home and family. You've probably had to rethink things, have conversations that may not have been comfortable. But if you can think of that as a time of really tilling the soil and getting ready to plant this seed, getting ready to plant a seed for stability and calm, quiet, stable stuff in that home and family area. Mm -hmm. huh. That's Yeah, it's like the secret to success. It's like, you've got to have your feet enough on the ground so that you can expand um, in a way that doesn't just kind of bowl you over. I mean, that's kind of what we're looking at. So there is something to that, like the secret to the Aquarius rising success is being able to figure that grounded piece out. And right now, at this moment in time, you've got that Taurus new moon to kind of say, yep, I've done that. I, I'm solidifying that. And it's about to move into the fifth house of creativity. So once the moon and sun move into that, they're going to immediately hit a trine with Pluto. So there's, there's a huge um, possibility for empowerment here. And that's why you want to be nicely grounded because um, this is creativity. This is this area of life where you can give of yourself in a totally unbridled way, in an unconditional way. And so it's very exciting. Uh, and to have Pluto in your first house too, is this is a big change in how you show up in the world. So it's pretty cool. This is this one excites me. I, I love the just to think about this. It's like this empowered personality mm -hmm. is stepping out in the world and just flowing this powerful energy of the personality into the creative life. Mm -hmm. That's pretty lovely. But yes, in order to really take advantage of that incredible empowerment, you really need to plant the seed and do what's necessary, water that seed to make sure that that area is as grounded as it can be as you move into this next spell, this next step. Nice. That's okay. beautiful. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to move on to those of you with Pisces rising. Mm. Yeah. So those of you with Pisces rising, you've got this new moon in Taurus in the third house of communication. Um, so these last few weeks, there's maybe been some upheaval, some tumult, perhaps in that third house as Mercury retrograded and went back and maybe stirred some things up. And now you've kind of put that behind you and you're ready to just 
you know, ground yourself and be ready to move on while carrying that sense of being grounded with you. So that's what we're wanting to do here with this very late in the season Taurus new moon. Um, because the sun and moon are going to move into Gemini soon. And Gemini is such a, I mean, it's an air sign and it's much more kind of scattered and curious and there's a lot more going on. So you want to maintain some sense of groundedness through that change. And as soon as it does that, it's going to hit that trine with Pluto, which is a real um, possibility for transformation um, in that area of life. So there's a, it's, I don't know, you just want to be ready for this opportunity. Um, but to do that, you need to be grounded so that you can expand without kind of getting knocked on your ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the area of your ability to communicate is what you re yeah, you really need to get that grounded. Yeah. I think about it, Pisces rising, people with Pisces rising tend to show up in the world as kind of dreamy, drifty, and yet the communication has to have that stability, that stable groundedness. So you're planting that seed, really creating that stable use of your voice. And then that prepares you for this empowerment coming from some secret information. I think of Pluto moving into the 12th house is really a pretty interesting movement, don't you think? The 12th yeah. house being your, I don't know, you can think of it as your, your deep unconscious. You can also think of it as your most, uh, you know, your spiritual nature. But with Aquarius there, there's something a little um, unusual in how your unconscious mind or your spiritual life resides there's something unusual there and pluto is empowering that and that empowerment is giving a direct jolt of energy to your home your family mm -hmm. huh, i'm trying to just imagine how that could play out so any of you who are listening to this if you have pisces rising and you can see what's coming here Leave us a note. I want to I want to pick your brain about it a little bit. So that's an interesting yeah. one. It is because, you know, the 12th house is like the hidden, the behind the scenes like this is pretty intangible. It's how you view not just the collective, but like the cosmos. I mean, there's that whole spiritual thing is the need to go on retreat and so on. And then you have Pluto there, which is more like the underworld, you know, and I mean, it's this different aspect of it's a, hidden in a slightly different way. Um, so it is a, it is an interesting, I, mean, I just think about like secrets bubbling up or I think about, yeah, just things bubbling up from your unconscious that you never expected and those informing the way that you end up parenting your children because the fourth house is home. I mean, yeah. it's that kind of connection, yeah. like something that you right. don't even know you're aware of. And all of a sudden, you, you know, this vision or this image or this, you know, set of words pops in your head and. Next or you're poking time. around in your grandparents' attic and you find yeah. some hidden information that suddenly changes the entire dynamics of your family. <laughs> you realize that your whole lineage is something completely different than you ever thought. So yeah, it is that kind of um, bursting onto consciousness than you would, you never expected. So yeah, yeah so and, do, do write us Pisces Rising. I yeah, hear and it, it's a trying aspect. So if something like that, like shocking occurs, it's okay, because it's a trying aspect. This is opening up something really um, that's going to empower your family, not destroy it, empower it. So yeah, keeping slow. that in mind. Yeah, do write us a note. All right. Okay, I think we have come to the end of our conversation here. That's right. I think we have, this has been a fun one. So uh, I hope everybody enjoys the final stroke of tour season and uh, see you around Thank the you. block for the, the next Gemini season. Yep. Thanks, Lori. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Bye.